Right, let's talk about the coagulation cascade now. So the coagulation cascade, it's an enzyme chain whose whose purpose is is to to produce the fibrin filament, which is the the important part of of stabilizing that the, you know that initial platelet plug into the, the stable fibrin clot, which is going to be there whilst the vessel wall is repaired. Um, and the important part of the coagulation cascade is that it's the amplification um, of this. It's a very small initial trigger that 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 has stemmed from this vessel wall injury and that needs to be amplified up um, to form enough enough fibrin filaments to, to actually produce a, a stable fibrin uh, fibrin clot and it's the complexity of this of this amplification process which I, is often um, quite difficult to understand but spending a bit of time breaking it down uh, should should make it make it easy to, 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 to tackle so uh, I'm going to start um, start this talk by by talking about the clotting factors who who play an important role in the coagulation cascade. The coagulation cascade is made up of a series of, of proteins that that are, that are called clotting factors, and these these are, are proteins that circulate in the blood um, and have one role or the other within the coagulation cascade. To to a degree, all of them except fibrinogen are either enzyme precursors. Or, or cofactors to the enzymes, and this enzyme, the idea of this enzyme is important, and I'll describe it in a bit more detail in a minute. But first, I'll, I'll just talk about how they're described. They're all written down as as numbers, so um, one, two, three, four, five, etc. Um, but they're actually written down in the Roman numeral form. So, for instance, uh, clotting factor ten, that's an important clotting factor, is displayed as as the Roman numeral X. Now. Because they're enzymes, they exist in two forms. In the circulating form, they're, they're just they're, they're enzyme precursors. They're proteins, but they don't have enzyme action yet. The coagulation cascade is where they are activated. They undergo change in their structure um, and go from being an enzyme precursor to being an actual enzyme with with an enzyme function. And when when we're drawing them down, this is where you put a, an A after them. A standing simply for being activated. So this has gone from, from a circulating protein, uh, factor 10, to being activated factor 10. So it's no longer just a circulating protein. Now this is an active enzyme uh, and it's it's playing a role within the coagulation cascade now. Because this is a, a change from a circulating protein to an active enzyme, this is how the positive feedback effect of the coagulation cascade works, and it'll be easier to show that if we draw now the actual coagulation cascade and talk you through it. So let's actually describe the coagulation cascade itself now. I think the best place to start is actually towards the end, and the final step of the coagulation cascade is the fibrin filament. The fibrin filament. And this is what the whole purpose of the cascade is for, is to produce this fibrin filament that is going to mesh with the platelets to form a stable fibrin clot. And the fibrin filament is, is simply produced from, from lots of fibrin monomers, these, these polymerized together to form these filaments. Um, so fibrin monomer and so the, 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 the step of the, the coagulation cascade is to create these fibrin monomers which will automatically polymerize together to form these fibrin filaments and the fibrin monomer is just is made quite simply from from the breakdown of fibrinogen fibrinogen which we've talked about before and it is this step here which is the important one in the coagulation cascade and there's an enzyme that acts at this point to break down fibrinogen, fibrinogen into a fibrin monomer um, and that enzyme is called thrombin which you may have heard of thrombin it exists 
in the blood as prothrombin. And as I was talking about before, that's its that's the enzyme precursor. So it, it, it circulates in, in prothrombin as prothrombin, and when it's activated, it becomes this very active enzyme itself called thrombin. Thrombin, which plays a very important role in the whole coagulation cascade. So, what I want to know now is is how did we get to this point? How did we get produce thrombin from prothrombin? And there's two different pathways that talks about the intrinsic and extrinsic pathways. Now, the extrinsic and intrinsic pathways are are often described separately. But it's important to know that they they actually interact in in in, in, in a number of ways. But it's, it's usually easier to, to to dissect the coagulation cascade by considering them separately. So so that's what I'll do here, uh, and we'll start with the extrinsic pathway, which is um, which is sort of the easiest to understand as a starting point. Uh, it's called extrinsic because it starts outside the blood. It starts with tissue wall injury uh, and the production of something called tissue factor, also known as thromboplastin. Now. What happens is is this combines with with activated factor seven, so this exists in small amounts in the blood, and individually they they have very little action of their own, but they combine um, as cofactors uh, to produce um, a tissue factor um, activated factor seven complex, and it's this complex which has got a. a it's got enzyme action now, as we were describing before. So it's an active, uh, it's an active component of the cascade and can have its enzyme action. Um, importantly, it has action on other things, as I'll come to in a minute. But importantly, it has enzyme action on factor ten. So if we we'll move down here now, bringing this back into place, um, this enzyme complex acts on factor ten to turn it into activated factor ten. And this is a, a very important step in the start of, of the coagulation cascade, uh, in that this activated factor 10 is now what can convert prothrombin into thrombin. So again, this is, a, this is a, an inactive uh, protein uh, circulating in the blood. An enzyme acts on it and turns it into an enzyme itself. Activated factor 10 is an enzyme that cleaves a molecule off prothrombin to turn it into the active enzyme thrombin. We're already seeing a pattern here that's starting. You know, proteins are being activated by other enzymes to become enzymes themselves. Um, and as you can see, this this can very readily understand how this becomes a a, a positive feedback loop um, when enzymes produce more enzymes and the whole process um, uh, explodes. However, this initial very simple pathway is um, is not enough to produce very much fibrin at all. Um, indeed this, this complex here, this uh, this um, tissue factor factor 7 complex is, is very rapidly inactivated and this th the small amounts of activated factor 10. Activated factor 10 on its own has a small uh, amount of activity in producing thrombin and what needs to happen is the, uh, the um, amplification step to happen and I'll talk through that now um, with reference to the intrinsic pathway as well. So the intrinsic pathway starts uh, starts in a different way. It starts from um, trauma to the blood or, or, or contact with the um, extravascular um, materials such as such as collagen, uh, and it starts with with activation of factor factor twelve. Um, and the important step is, is that that itself again in the same way as um, as with with, with previous um, previous reactions. This activated factor twelve uh, is an enzyme which has its effect. On another um, inert molecule, um, um, factor 11, activating it and causing it to become um, activated factor factor 11, um, and this factor 11 now now has has an enzyme action of its own. Importantly, it has its effect on, on um, factor 9. Right there. Now, factor 9. Uh, if we remember, go back over here to our extrinsic pathway, we produce this tissue factor um, and um, activated factor 7 um, complex. And th th that also um, has, has production of activating this factor 9. Um, 
but um, the, for, through the intrinsic pathway, this activated factor A11 it also has um, effects in, in activating it. So we can see here we're producing this this factor nine, um, which is now becoming activated factor nine. And this is this is um, it's it's not an enzyme by itself uh, as such because as with the uh, up here as with our tissue factor uh, and factor seven it has to be combined um, with another molecule to actually have its activity and this is factor eight activated factor eight so these are now combined together and uh, this now has its uh, has an enzyme action which similar to uh, similar to our tissue factor up here it will have its effect on activating factor 10 and once we've activated this factor 10 um, we can come and start producing thrombin so that's been a summary of the um, of the intrinsic pathway now this is sort of sort of the overall summary of initiation here so if we picture you know the, the tissue factor um, has combined with factor 7 and has started producing some some activated factor 10 which is producing thrombin we've also got the slower intrinsic pathway over here which is producing uh, activated factor 9 combining with factor 8 and also having its effect here producing activated factor 10 however the important thing is that this is a very a very slow process that it's not having a, a significant amount of activity in, in producing thrombin in producing um, this this fibrinogen uh, this this fibrin monomer and this is where the the, the most important uh, idea to understand is that thrombin itself now is going to have a big positive feedback effect once it's been activated um, as I said, we know it's a, it's an enzyme now. It is it is uh, converting fibrinogen into fibrin. It is uh, it's an important enzyme which has now got a lot of uh, additional effects to positively feedback on this whole coagulation cascade. So let's let's talk about them now. The first one we'll uh, describe is um, factor five. So factor five over here, um, it gets activated by thrombin and it becomes activated factor 5 activated factor 5 uh, combines with um, factor 10 over here and increases its enzyme activity not a very good dotted line there increases its um, enzyme activity uh, so that is much a, a more powerful um, producer of prothrombin this factor activated factor uh, 10 factor 5 complex is now a powerful producer of thrombin um, but thrombin doesn't stop there um, as we mentioned here factor activated factor 9 and activated factor 8 uh, are an important uh, uh, effect on producing this activated factor 10 so what we want to know is where does this factor 8 come from Factor eight it exists bound to um, a molecule we d we discussed earlier on in the um, hemostasis topic uh, from Willebrand factor, um, and here it is uh, is bound to that. And guess what thrombin does? Yes, it has a very important role in converting in um, activating th this factor eight um, and allowing it to to play its part in in becoming a uh, a important cofactor here for activated factor 9. So there we go. So once again thrombin having a strong positive feedback effect because now with lots of activated factor 9 and um, activated factor 8 we're producing even more activated factor 10 which is going on to produce even more thrombin. So we're already starting to get you know two big positive feedback um, circles here going on. Um, and not only that, thrombin has some more positive feedback action. If we go back to the um, right back to the start of our um, intrinsic pathway up here, we can see um, factor 11 be, uh, being produced to activated factor 11. Um, I'm going to try to find a way around here, uh, but thrombin also um, augments that process as well. It has a, a positive impact on speeding this. 
process up. So through this, we're producing more factor IX. Um, again, positive feeding back to the rest of the process. So the final action of um, thrombin that I want to mention is something called um, factor 13. Um, I'll come down here a tiny bit more. Uh, factor 13 is also known as a fibrin stabilizing factor uh, and unsurprisingly it is converted into activated factor 13 and also unsurprisingly it is thrombin that does this process bring it down here it acts on acts on this factor 13 um, and the activated factor 13 basically what it does it plays a role in stabilizing these these um, these loose fibrin fibrin filaments um, so also has an important role in stabilizing stabilizing the clot. A small note here is the importance of not just the, the clotting factors um, but also of um, firstly um, platelet phospholipids they play an important role acting as a vehicle for much of these um, these reactions um, but also calcium uh, except for the very first two reactions of the um, intrinsic pathway uh, calcium ions uh, are essential for, for for all of the reactions of the coagulation cascade to actually occur. Uh, the importance of, is, for instance, um, one method of preventing blood from clotting if it, for a blood test is to simply precipitate the calcium out using, using like citrate ions uh, because without calcium ions um, present, uh, the, these reactions uh, cannot occur. So after that quite quite long uh, talk through um, the coagulation cascade, I want to summarise now um, just to check that, that we all fully understand what you know what it is. So it's a, it's a, it's a collection of, of of enzymes basically. The end products are enzymes which act on other inert uh, proteins to turn them into enzymes, and that is a whole uh, the whole basis of of, of the cascade. Um, each of these um, these molecules has um, it is denoted by by Roman numerals, the clotting factors, which are the proteins. And when they become activated, when they have an enzyme action, they're denoted with the um, with the little a to, to note that they're activated. The end step of the coagulation cascade is, as we see here, it's from fibrinogen into a fibrin monomer, which will uh, polymerize together to form the fibrin filament needed for the clot. The most important enzyme for this is thrombin. As we see here, it's a central enzyme, um, which is not only is it acting on on um, on this this key stage in the in the reaction key stage in, in the, the process, but it also has a lot of positive feedback on the rest of the coagulation cascade. How do we produce thrombin? It's produced from prothrombin, uh, and the main enzyme complex that does that is uh, activated factor ten uh, combined with activated factor um, five. Activated factor 10 is the initial um, starting point, but during the amplification process, um, it's combined with its cofactor, um, factor, activated factor 5, uh, and is able to produce much more, much more thrombin. How do we get activated factor 10? Um, well, the, there's the uh, extrinsic and intrinsic pathways, as we described. Um, the main uh, extrinsic pathway route is, is from tissue factor and, and, and factor 7. Um, Combining uh, together as another another cofactor uh, enzyme group that will produce that will convert factor 10 to, to its activated form. Alternately, we have this uh, alt, uh, this intrinsic route from um, activated factor 9 and activated factor factor 8. And the, all of these processes, um, from plays an important role in, in increasing the activity of them. So. This is this is the main reason why uh, we have this. It has a very small, very small startup effect. Uh, a small amount of um, of, for instance, tissue fats is needed, and once thrombin um, is produced, the whole process um, uh, grows exponentially, um, and the positive feedback takes over, allowing rapid production of fibrin filaments.